Good morning. Any, any legislators that are here, if you can work your way up behind us here on the stairs. As you see, we also have a number of sheriffs from Pennsylvania on the stairs and our speakers up front. And a lot of folks in the rotunda and up above, thank you all for joining us today at your state capitol. I'm State Representative Daryl Metcalf, and welcome to our annual Second Amendment rally. Hopefully we had everyone make it in off the buses. I know I was sent a picture earlier showing a long line of folks trying to make it through security. So hopefully we've got everybody in here now. If some stragglers are coming in, uh, hopefully they won't miss too much. So just so they don't miss the opening with Dave Bray USA singing our national anthem, I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes here to start things off. I'm State Representative Darrell Metcalf from Butler County, the 12th District, and was driving... <laughs> Thank you. I was driving in late last night, got here about midnight last night, and along the turnpike, I was shocked to see a couple of attack billboards on the NRA and on Second Amendment. I've been seeing one that's called for the impeachment of our president who supports the Second Amendment, trying to play off of making America great again. And it's right in the heart of Pennsylvania where, where I'm sure the community, the majority of the community in that area must be extremely offended by the message they're seeing on that billboard in their area of the state. The left has gone crazy. They are so over the top with their attacks on our rights. We need to make sure that we're, our voices are heard here at the Capitol today to ensure that the state legislators and that the governor understands that the majority of us aren't buying into the nonsense they're putting up on these billboards, right? Yeah. You know, as a veteran, I raised my hand, I swore to uphold and defend the Constitution. And that wasn't a temporary oath for me. I've taken that oath similar, adding in the Pennsylvania Constitution, once I became a legislator, as a veteran, I swore to uphold and defend the U.S. Constitution. As a legislator, I've sworn to uphold and defend the U.S. Constitution and the state constitution. So not just the Second Amendment, but Article I, Section 21 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, which is even stronger language than in the Second Amendment, that the right of the people to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned. And we need to make sure today that in the halls of this Capitol, legislators and the governor understand, and the Supreme Court here understands, we will not allow our Second Amendment, our right to bear arms under Article 1, Section 21 of the Pennsylvania Constitution to be questioned by them or anybody. I'm now going to introduce a United States Navy veteran and singer-songwriter, Dave Bray USA, to sing the national anthem for us. Give him a big hand of applause, please. Thank you, sir. You know, before I do this, I, I, I gotta ask one quick question. Do we have any patriots in the house today? Might be all right for maybe another building, but I'm going to ask it one more time. Do we have any God-fearing, freedom-loving, flag-waving, gun-toting patriots in the house today? Yeah. Let's sing our song together. Oh, see, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight 
O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled Thank, thank you, Dave Bray, USA. If I could ask Dave if he wouldn't mind an encore, I'd like to hear Dave just by himself. I appreciate everybody's patriotism. Um, I know we all, I actually have, I sing this song very frequently with my granddaughter, Aviana. She's, uh, she's uh, under two years old, 20, 21 months old right now, I believe, um, if I'm counting right. Um, and we, we've got a little book, and I sing this song with her pretty regularly that she enjoys singing, singing the national anthem with her. So. If I could have uh, Dave give us an encore and just listen to Dave's voice on this, I'd really appreciate it, if he wouldn't mind. One more time. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This, is, uh, this is a new one for me, so I'm flattered. Representative, I appreciate it. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm nervous. I wasn't nervous before. No, in all actuality, this is the greatest nation on the planet Earth. And with God's will, I believe that this nation can move forward in a positive light. I've never really sung the song. I've only ever sung the words to this song. Every time I heard it sung, as I stared at it, gazed into the flag and the star field, I saw the cross that lied buried in those 50 stars. And I've always kept the faith in my heart while I sung it. And I've only ever sung those words the way that I felt that they needed to be sung. So I appreciate this more than you'll ever know, and the representation of uh, this country is, is important for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be the patriot that does this for you today. Oh, say can you see by the tauntly light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say he does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land Thank you, thank you, Dave Bray, USA. Appreciate uh, Dave's support of our military and our law enforcement. Appreciate him being here again, second year in a row, to, uh, to share his uh, gift that God's given him with us here today. I'd now like to introduce Representative Matt Dowling, and Matt has introduced legislation to try and stop the wolf attack 
on our Second Amendment from his misuse of his executive order on states of emergency. Matt? Good morning. On January 10th, 2018, Governor Wolf declares the heroin and opioid epidemic a statewide disaster emergency. I agree that the drug problem in the Commonwealth and within our country has become an epidemic. But in the governor's declaration, he knowingly or unknowingly invokes Section 6107 of Title 18, which states that with some exceptions, no person shall carry a firearm upon the public streets or upon any public property during an emergency proclaimed by state or municipal governmental executives. With one signature, the governor suspended the rights to bear arms as provided in the Pennsylvania Constitution and in the United States Constitution in the Second Amendment. Within two days of his declaration, I circulated a co-sponsorship memo for House Bill 2021 which repeals Section 6107 of Title 18 and protects law-abiding gun owners' rights to open carry in the Commonwealth during a state of emergency. Woo! Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but in a state where five members of the court can usurp 253 members of the legislature in drawing congressional maps, I do not want one governor to have the single-handed ability to suspend my constitutionally endowed rights without any checks and balances. Yeah. Our forefathers knew that the rights to bear arms were not just about hunting for sport. It wasn't just about protecting your own home. It was about keeping government in check. Those who fight to limit your Second Amendment rights like to talk about the size and type of weapon you should or shouldn't be allowed to carry. They refer to our brilliant forefathers and imply that they meant for us to simply only own or bear flintlocks or muskets. But our forefathers gave us the right to own the military-grade technology of their day. And they would want us to have the ability to organize in this age as a well-regulated militia that could stand up to the tyranny of government. My bill, House Bill 2021, would eliminate any governor's ability to limit the right of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state. During times of a disaster, times when one would assume that Things like violence, looting, or extreme behavior would be more than likely to take place. The times when we need the ability to keep and bear arms. Yeah. House Bill 2021 would limit the power of the governor from suspending the, necessi the necessities to the security of a free state and the right of people to keep and bear arms, a right that shall not be infringed. The state of emergency we're living under today is an emergency where law-abiding firearm owners are being kept from protecting their families, their properties, and quite frankly, the Commonwealth. The true state of emergency that we're in right now is that good, hard-working people like yourselves have to take a day off from work to come to Harrisburg to stand your ground and to join together as one voice in saying that our rights as Americans and as Pennsylvanians will not be taken away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I commend you and I applaud you and I'm dedicated to working with you to make sure that no governor, not Governor Wolf, not any man or woman that succeeds him shall have the ability to suspend your constitutional rights. I thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you, Representative Matt Dowling, one of our new members, and uh, as you can tell, a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you sharing with us today about that important piece of legislation that you had to draft as a uh, reaction to this wolf attack. Now going to introduce Mr. Cam Edwards. He's the host of Cam and Company on NRA TV, and we have him early in the schedule because he's got to take off back to D.C. to be on the air this afternoon. So, Cam, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to telling uh, our audience and the world this afternoon about each and every one of you gathered here today, and I really appreciate you being here. I have to say, you don't look like monsters to me. You don't look like terrorists to me. Some of you look like veterans. Can, we, can, can you raise your hand if you're a veteran? Can you give us a shout if you are a mom or a dad? Now, a follow-up. Give me a shout if you're a mom or a dad who cares more about your guns than your kids. <laughs> These are the lies that are being told about you and me and every other law-abiding gun owner every day right now. But those lies, those lies cannot sustain a single conversation with one of you because your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, they know who you are. They know who the law-abiding gun owners in this country are. They know where the problem lies when it comes to public safety, and it's not with you. So thank you for showing up today. Thank you for fighting. You, I know that you are not only here in the rotunda, you are at your city council meetings, you are at your school board meetings, you are at the ballot box on election day, and you will be heard. I have been hosting Cam and Company for 14 years. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of you here today. And I got to tell you, the gun owners in Pennsylvania that I've met are some of the nicest, kindest, most caring individuals that I've ever had the honor to know. I, I got I to share something real quick. I had a stranger come up to me just a couple of minutes ago. He said, my wife wanted you to have this. This is a prayer shawl for my wife, who's uh, currently going through cancer right now. This is who gun owners in Pennsylvania are. They care about strangers. They care about their communities. They care about their states. And yes, they care about their rights. You keep fighting. You keep talking. You keep explaining to lawmakers and those who don't understand what this issue is all about. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be questioned. And yet, we've got issues, as the lawmaker just said, you've got an opioid crisis in Pennsylvania. We've got an opioid crisis around the country. We've got violent crime that's been increasing in the last couple of years. There are things that we can do to make Pennsylvania safer, but it's not going to come from infringing on your rights. Yeah. Woo. So this afternoon, as you talk with your lawmakers, Please just know that the work that you're doing here is appreciated around the country. There are gun owners in all 50 states who see what you're doing, being an ambassador for our right to keep and bear arms around the nation, and we are with you 100 percent. Thank you for being here. Thank you for fighting. Thank you. And continue on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cam Edwards with the NRA TV. And Cam has to uh, head back to D.C., so he'll be leaving us, not because of anything anybody said. But uh, we thank him for making the trip up. He's going to be back on the air by 2, so if safe travels, my friend. And I'm sure as a result of mentioning your wife today, many more people will be praying for her speedy recovery. We wish her the best. And uh, have a good day. We have a lot of legislators here with us today. You see behind me a number of sheriffs from, uh, from Pennsylvania. We appreciate the sheriffs being here today and in uniform to show law enforcement support. <laughs> law enforcement support for the Constitution, right? I know 
Congressman Glenn Thompson is in the Capitol today, and he was planning on being here. I'm not sure at which point uh, Congressman Thompson might be here, but I know he planned on being here today. Um, Representative Dush, I think he was going to plan on being out here with us at some point, so we appreciate that also from the congressman who's with us. Um, we have three senators here today that I'm aware of, Senator Camera Bartolotta, Senator Scott Hutchinson, and Senator Elder Vogel, and I'm going to ask a couple of them to say a couple words a little bit later on in the program here. We have a lot of House members behind me also, and I'm going to mention some of those and I'm going to mention some a little bit later, but uh, the list of those that RSVP'd today to be here is Representative Steve Bloom, Marty Causer, Jim Christiana, Bud Cook, Becky Corbin, Linda Culver, Russ Diamond, Matt Dowling, you heard from, George Dunbar, Chris Dush is here, Eli Ivankovich is not next up on our speakers list, Garth Everett, Mindy Fee I saw, Jonathan Fritz, Keith Griner's over here to my right, Seth Grove, Marsha Hahn, here's Congressman Thompson, uh, Representative Doyle Heffley, Dave Hickernell, Representative Kristen Hill, Rich Irvin, Lee James, Barry Joswiak, Rob Kaufman, John Kiefer, Fred Keller, Mark Keller, Kate Clunk, Jerry Knowles I saw, Bill Quartz, Ryan McKenzie, Zach Mako, Dave Maloney, Jim Marshall I saw here. He's got a bunch of folks from Beaver, I believe, with him here today too. Representative Kurt Mazur. Representative Carl Metzger, I saw back up behind me. Dave Millard's off over to the left here. Brett Miller, Eric Nelson, Ted Nesbitt, Donna Oberlander is also our caucus secretary of the Republican caucus, Jason Ortitai. Tina Pickett was early. Jeff Pyle, you'll be hearing from. Jack Rader. Kathy Rapp is over here to my left. Harry Reedshaw was here. I know Harry had another uh, meeting to run off to. Um, our majority leader, Dave Reed, was planning on being here today. Representative Reese, Brad Roy, Frank Ryan. Rick Saccone is here, off to my left. More importantly, Rick's wife is off to my right. <laughs> Representative Stan Saylor, who's our Appropriations Chair, Paul Schummel, Kurt Sonny, Craig Stats, Will Tallman, and Mike Tobash. Representative Jesse Topper, Justin Walsh, Judy Ward, Ryan Warner, Park Wentling, and Dave Zimmerman. I'm sure I might have some more to um, announce later. Before we ask Eli, if I could ask Congressman Thompson to give us a couple words, since he's here, um, on his support for the Second Amendment. Wow, what a turnout. Well, good morning, Patriots. Good morning. What, a, uh, what a privilege and honor to be here. You know, normally I got to tell you, Darrell, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm going coming from down from my part of Pennsylvania, I get to Harrisburg, I normally speed up. I don't stop. But uh, it is great to be here today with all these Patriots behind me and all the Patriots everywhere within this Capitol. Uh, you know, I believe, in, I believe in freedom and protecting our Second Amendment rights. To me, that guarantees a citizen's right, obviously, is to own and bear arms. And our Second Amendment really is this country's original homeland security, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yes. Now, where this right is freely exercised without government infringement, our citizens live with a, a freedom, with a, a deterrent, and a defense of violent crimes. And sadly, the Second Amendment rights are under attack. We know that. We see that. I see that in Washington every day. The liberals far left have finally made their intentions clear. And, and someone's probably already shared this morning, but if they did, it's worth repeating because it is so transparent today. Retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, who just a month ago made it abundantly clear when he called for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Um, no, we have a duty. And it's our duty to respect and defend the freedoms our Constitution guarantees. This retired justice is obviously no student of history. Eldridge Jerry, Vice President under James Madison, wrote, Self-defense is the primary law of nature, with no subsequent law of society can abolish. This primary principle, the immediate gift of the Creator, obliges everyone to remonstrate against the stride of ambition and a wanton lust for denomination, and to resist the first approaches, approaches of tyranny. Roger Sherman, who was a busy man, he's a signer of the Declaration of Independence, of the, I'm sorry, a signer of the Declaration of the 1774 Continental Association, the 1776 Declaration of Independence, the 1781 Article of Confederation, and the Constitution of 1789, offered this guidance on our Second Amendment rights. And he said, sad will be the day when the American people forget their tradition and history 
and no longer remember the country they cherish and the freedoms they hope to preserve were born from the throes of armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. Boy, they had good words back there, didn't they? They sure did. Yeah. You know, in 1774, King George III banned flintlock muskets to the colonies, citing they were weapons of war, dangerous to society and government. That didn't work out real well for King George, did it? I want to thank all of you once again. Thank you all for your leadership and all those who are here who are standing up for America's rights, America's liberties, starting with the Second Amendment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Congressman G.T. Thompson. Thank you, uh, G.T. We appreciate you being here today. Next speaker is Representative Eli Ivankovich. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you uh, to all the speakers. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm honored to be able to be here. Uh, I'm Eli Ivankovich. I, I represent uh, uh, the best parts of Western Pennsylvania in uh, Westmoreland and Allegheny counties. Uh, this is my last term as a lawmaker here in Pennsylvania, and uh, my last opportunity to, uh, to speak to you as a lawmaker about the importance of the Second Amendment and what I think we can do. You know, why are we here? Why are we here? Defending our rights, right? Well, there's a reason why we have to defend our rights, and why is that? Because there are people out there that seek to infringe upon them. There are people out there that make fancy arguments for why we should not have guns or why we shouldn't have certain types of guns or what you should be able to use them for. And why are they making these arguments? Are some of them leftover relics of an ideology of communism and socialism? Sure. But I think there are a lot of good Americans out there who have been fooled who have been fooled with that. The gentleman earlier used the word lies. But they don't look at those lies about you as lies. They, those are their facts. Those are their facts that they, they think that you are a certain type of person. They think that you do a certain type of thing. They think that guns are the source of evil. Well, what are our facts? Our facts are things that we say all the time. Guns don't kill people, right? Guns are our right, whether we're going to use them to defend ourselves, whether we're going to use them as a safety net. We need to get out of this feedback loop from hell, where when there's something that goes wrong in our society, you have some people talking about gun control, and you have some people talking about mental illness, we need to have a more reasoned approach to how we talk about our rights. And so when we go out and we talk about the Second Amendment, we need to arm ourselves not just with facts, but with reason. And, 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 and there could be no more truth, no more simple truth about the Second Amendment than this. Who here is willing to stand up and defend the Second Amendment? Raise your hand. Who here believes that if government tries to take away your gun through whatever means, that it is infringing upon your right? Who believes that? As Representative Metcalf said earlier, he took an oath to, to, to defend the U.S. Constitution. Who here would stand up to defend the U.S. Constitution, including their Second Amendment right? So why then, why then do lawmakers in our state capitals and in Washington, D.C., why do they seek to attack a right that tens of millions of Americans would stand up to defend? We need to uh, push away that control, and we need to go at this issue from a very reasoned perspective. We have a violence problem in this country. Let's solve the violence country, but not in a way that these tens of millions of people won't stand up and fight vigorously against. Let's exhaust all options first. Will you continue to stand with us to defend the Second Amendment? God bless you. Thank you, Representative Eli Ivankovich. Thank you, Eli. We now have uh, one of those individuals that does a lot of um, fighting in the trenches, on the ground, in the courts. 
and that's Joshua Prince. Attorney Joshua Prince, you're one of the premier Second Amendment attorneys in the U.S. Thank you, Daryl. Woo! Yeah. It's great to be back once again in front of all of you warm-blooded patriots. It's a distinct honor and privilege to be here in front of all of you. Now, I promised Daryl that I'd keep my comments to two to three minutes, but you know what happens when you put a mic in front of an attorney. But I'm going to try my best and give you an update since last year on some of the cases and issues that we've seen develop, both the positive and the negative. Since last year, we had Judge Jones, a federal district court judge from the Middle District of Pennsylvania, rule that it was unconstitutional as applied to Mr. Keyes to deprive him for the remainder of his life the right to keep and bear arms because of a single isolated involuntary mental health commitment over a decade ago. We also had from the Western District Federal District Court, Judge Kim Gibson rule that a 302 mental health involuntary examination was insufficient to trigger a federal disability because of the lack of due process that it provides. Yeah. We've also seen approximately 29 cases either not prosecuted or dismissed when the prosecutor became aware of the Superior Court's decision in Goslin, where it held that an individual does have a defense of other lawful purpose when possessing some form of weapon on school grounds. That was a case that I was involved in litigating at the appellate level and has made a, a, a distinct difference in the case law here in the Commonwealth since the Superior Court issued that decision. But not all of the case, well, one other positive case I'll mention, because I know a lot of you have licenses to carry firearms. We also saw an injunction issued against the Monroe County Sheriff's Department because it was requiring information beyond that, which is required by the Pennsylvania application for a license to carry firearms. And the court said, no, the only thing that an individual can be required to submit is that application. Now, not everything has been great. We've already heard about the proclamation that Governor Wolf issued. In fact, I blogged about it immediately when it was issued. Governor Wolf came out and said, I was wrong. I didn't know what I was talking about. I offered to debate him. He wouldn't take me up to, to debate. But what was interesting, about a week and a half later, he issued a statement stating that he was telling law enforcement not to prosecute it. Well, Governor Wolf has a little bit of a problem. He doesn't have jurisdiction to tell local law enforcement what laws to prosecute and which not to. But that's not the only issue we've seen. We currently have the Pennsylvania Supreme Court taking up a case to decide whether it constitutes reasonable suspicion of criminal activity merely because an individual concealed carries a firearm. And we already have case law from the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, Commonwealth versus Hawkins, where the Pennsylvania Supreme Court previously declared that it does not constitute reasonable suspicion. I'm gravely concerned about what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is prepared to do in the, that case, Commonwealth versus Hicks. We've also seen a plethora of issues, such as State Representative Sims making disparaging remarks about gun owners, calling them gundamentalists and amosexuals. Yet neither the media nor his party has made any statement regarding this. He has never apologized, nor has anyone called on him to resign. Worse yet, he has deleted pro-Second Amendment statements from his public Facebook page in violation of the First Amendment. And yet the Ethics Committee has done nothing. We have a lot of issues in front of us. We've heard that over the uh, month, the past month, there was a week and a half hearings that occurred for quote-unquote public safety to address firearm rights, where here in this capital, they're talking about restricting law-abiding individuals' rights 
to keep and bear arms. I requested opportunity to testify at, that, at those hearings, and I was denied. Everyone was denied in violation of the Pennsylvania Constitution. But that's not it. We also see the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives now looking to regulate bump stocks, where they want to make all owners overnight felons and strip them of those bump stocks or other property without any form of just compensation in violation of the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment. Make no mistake about it, they're coming for your guns. Now, I realize I'm probably beyond my time, so I'm going to leave with a quote that's generally attributed to Benjamin Franklin, but there's some dispute over it, but I think it makes the point. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb having a vote over what to have for dinner. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. Go make your voices heard. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Attorney Joshua Prince, and uh, you went over, but it was well worth it. So thank you for uh, thank you for sharing. I mean, we could we could listen to you for uh, for quite a length of time, but we've got to go to session at one, so we, we do have to move along here with the schedule. But thank you very much. Um, next speaker is Representative Jeff Pyle. You will notice. I have nothing up my sleeve and speak only from the heart. This is what 10 or 12 of these you've done, Daryl, and I've been here for every one. I'm proud to tell anybody that'll listen, I come from Armstrong County and represent parts of Butler and Indiana as well, the 60th legislative district. Now, if you've not heard, in the latest census report, they did a study on how many households have guns. Yes, my friends, Armstrong County is fourth in the entire nation in per capita firearms. <laughs> I keep telling the wife we have a shot at number three, but she tells me if I try to push that envelope, I owe her new living room furniture, and I, I don't have any living room furniture money right now. Folks, why I'm here, last week I was asked to present in front of the Judiciary Committee. They currently have 36 anti-gun laws on their books, and right now I'm clawing through my pockets trying to find the list. Let me make it real simple for you. Before I got elected here, I was a history teacher with a concentration in constitutional government. Pennsylvania is a constitutional republic. You're here. <laughs> now, the way this works is you guys go out and you pick somebody that's going to speak for you. I imagine when that person came up beating on your porch or leaving you something in your hand, you ask them what's your stance on guns. Very good. It's a very valid question you should ask. What I know is that my father, my grandfather, my great uncle, my uncle, I could go back five or six greats in my family. They've all served in the military. Now, why are we? That's right. That's right. My dad, who stood six foot seven, 260 pounds, told me I wasn't going to the military. And at that size, you kind of listened to him. So where are we going here? We are a constitutional republic. That means the elected people that you vote for have to pick what we vote on and what we don't. As I said, there are 36 anti-gun bills over there. And I stood up and said, I've got a problem here. No bill may be passed that runs counter to our protections of our Constitution, which many people have told you. Article 1, Section 21, 
the right of the people to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves in the state shall not be questioned. <laughs> 230 years of repeated court rulings have reaffirmed Article 1, Section 21. And I looked behind me as I stepped up here I want to compliment you on that banner. I won't comply either. That's right. I'm going to close because, like many other people here, I have a meeting to get to also. You are a citizen. You have agreed to uphold the rights and the laws of this Commonwealth. In return, the Commonwealth guarantees you protections. Now, are you a citizen or are you a subject? I am a citizen, and I'm betting you are too. My name's, My name's Jeff Pyle. Thanks for coming out today. Daryl, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jeff Pyle. Our next speaker is a gentleman who's been with us for many, many years at our annual rally. We appreciated his support uh, in making the trip up from Virginia so many times over the years. Mr. Larry Pratt, Executive Director Emeritus of Gun Owners of America. Larry. Darrell, I want to thank you for the steadfast support you've given to the Second Amendment for organizing this this year and so many in the past. I think it makes a big difference, and we appreciate your work. The, um, the media has got a new uh, drumbeat for us. They've got a new way to solve the, quote, gun violence problem, and that is that they're going to use psychiatrists to make us all better. And they're inviting spouses to rat out each other. Go to the cops and tell them that uh, Jane or Jim is acting a little funny, uh, loses his temper, and um, got guns. And on the basis of that, guns are being removed from people's hands. Over a quarter of a million veterans have felt this lash. They've had to knock on the door, no warning, no warrant, in come the authorities, and out go the guns. And if there were ever a good argument for no registration, that would be it. Uh, it's bad enough that we have to sign up at the store. The, these are called uh, red flag laws. Uh, that's their pretty sugar coating uh, for this. Uh, we think these are gun confiscation measures, and there's something like that kicking around here in the Pennsylvania legislature. So I would challenge everybody here that you've got your work cut out for you right here in River City. There are people that, that think that we ought to grab the guns first, and then they will give you an opportunity maybe three weeks later, to hire an attorney, cha-ching, and then come into court, uh, take all that time off, and uh, you'll probably lose because you'll be before the same judge that signed the, the uh, confiscation order. Lots of luck. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the only standard that would have to be used in this measure is that uh, whether or not the owner represents some danger. Well, I would imagine that just about everybody in this room could be seen by somebody, especially liberals, as some danger. <laughs> so, uh, guys, uh, I would say this is the place, this is the time to contact your legislators and tell them that the so-called red flag law is a gun confiscation law. It would have been uh, happily used in a place like Cuba or Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia. It doesn't belong here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Larry Pratt, and uh, appreciated Larry's steadfast support of our efforts here to rally every year and uh, get the message out uh, 
on defending the Second Amendment, defending our Constitution. I'd like to ask uh, Senator Vogel to uh, join me at the microphone and say a couple words, uh, especially to the folks that uh, made the trip here from Beaver, um, from his area. Uh, thank you, Representative Metcalf. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome all Pennsylvanians here who support the Second Amendment. It's a great day. It's a great group of people here today. And like he said, I know a lot of people took off work today to come here, but I want to specially thank four busloads of people who got up at 3 or 4 o'clock this morning for the four-hour bus ride. That's how, that's how much they believe in their Second Amendment rights and how important it is to them to be here. They took a four-hour bus ride from Beaver County to be here. The Beaver County Sportsman's Conservation League, this nice big banner of these guys, got up this morning to come here with four busloads of people. So I want to thank them for coming because they, as well as everyone in this room, realize how important our Second Amendment rights are and how we need to be here. Because like I tell everyone, it's a squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And now you're not here supporting your clause, and you're not sitting at the table. Somebody else will sit there in your place, and they will do what they want to do, not what you want to have done. So I want to thank them for coming today, especially I want to also thank Sheriff Guy and Sheriff Shoup from Beaver County and Butler County. They're here as well with the sheriffs today. So thank you, everyone, once again, and enjoy your day here in Harrisburg. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Vogel. The, the Senate is not in the session as I understand it today. They canceled their session today and we had some people that were kind of wondering if the House might do the same. The House didn't. That's why you see many House members. We have dozens of House members here. But uh, Senator Vogel, Senator Hutchinson, and Senator Bartolotta, who I'd ask to come to the microphone and say a couple words quickly, if you don't mind joining us quick. I kind of Spur, kind of sprung that on our last minute, but the Senator Bartolotta also. So we have three senators that took time to join us today, even though they weren't scheduled for session, and we appreciate them being here. Senator Bartolotta. Thank you so much, Representative Metcalf. And thank you for doing this um, for all of these years. It's truly um, a wonderful rally, and it's an incredibly important. And I don't care if the rest of the building is empty. To have all of you here voicing your concerns and your desire to protect our Second Amendment right is amazing. So thank all of you for being here and making it all the way from Beaver County. I represent part of Beaver County, uh, Greene County and Washington County, so it's the, the farthest corner of Pennsylvania, and I wouldn't miss this for the world. Um, I'm a daughter of the American Revolution. Almost, thank you. My grandfather was on the ground crew of the Enola Gay. My son just became a newly minted United States Marine this summer. Oorah. But if you'll notice, we'll sing along. One of these things is not like the other. I don't look a whole lot like the other fellas that were up here <laughs> speaking. Uh, but one of the things I want to really uh, uh, bring to the forefront, there's a sign over here. I think maybe she might have left. A lovely lady who had a sign. My gun is my equalizer. And not to, not to be a little too dark, but uh, when I was only six years old, my mother was um, abducted and brutally raped for two days. And if she had had the ability, the, the training, uh, and the, the, the forethought to be carrying, that story would have ended a lot differently. That is a story that is all too common. 90% of assaults on women are done without a weapon. No weapon. So yes, my gun is my equalizer. So again, keep up the fight. Uh, it's been 230 years since we had uh, our, our Constitution and uh, our amendments signed into to action, and we have to keep fighting every single year. Because without the Second Amendment, all the rest are kindling. So thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, Senator Bartolotta. Thank you, Senator Bartolotta. I'd now like to ask Sheriff Mike Sloop from Butler County to join me at the microphone.
Drunk drivers kill families. Deranged people using bombs kill people. People that want to harm you with a knife will kill you. These people are prosecuted. And I want to know why the NRA is blamed for gun deaths. When they have probably the best safety and education programs out there, such as Eddie Eagle teaching our kids. So I made an independent decision. I've asked no one else to join me because I felt it was for my office that I put out an order telling my deputies they're not allowed to use certain airlines, certain hotels. and certain car rental companies. Why? One, it's the right thing to do. And some, thank you. I've always said sometimes the right thing to do is the hardest choice you make because it won't be popular, but it's the right thing. Now I will tell you this, we are very responsible with taxpayer dollars. We will continue to be responsible with taxpayer dollars. I believe in this decision. I've taken some hit. I've taken some criticism. And I'm going to tell you, if I get crucified, I'll be in damn good company. <laughs> sheriff Sloop is my sheriff from Butler County, and I appreciate uh, the sheriff taking a stand for the Second Amendment as he's done. He's been with us in years past, and, and uh, he just recently made the press about that directive in his office, and I thought, we need to get Mike to come back and share that with the whole state. A lot of sheriffs here also. So We have a few other legislators that joined us that uh, I didn't mention on a first go-through. Representative Sue Helm, Representative Tom Sankey, and another senator, Senator John Eichelberger. Thanks for being here today, even when you're not in session. Matt Shipley, could you raise your hand? Matt Shipley is a Navy SEAL. Thank you, Matt. Paul Mango, can you raise your hand? Paul Mango is a U.S. Army Ranger. We have the SEALs and the Rangers here today. And I saw you two guys standing in the crowd and just wanted to mention that. We have a lot of veterans here. Veterans, raise your hands again. Some of those veterans may have been Rangers, may have been Airborne, may have been SEALs. But, uh, but two, two of the gentlemen I know that serve in those elite forces, the Navy SEALs and the Army Rangers, too, that uh, served in those elite um, organizations in our military. And we thank you for your service. Thank you to our veterans here today for your service. And we're all standing together in defense of the Constitution, right? Another good segue, defending the Constitution, Representative Chris Dush. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. And wow, what a group. And I'm going to follow up on what you just said there. Uh, I was sitting in Baghdad in 2009. I'm a retired master sergeant from the 193rd uh, Special Operations Security Forces with the Air National Guard when my son called me up and told me, Dad, I'm going to the Air Force. I'm going pararescue. Now, we have men and women in this Commonwealth who have taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and Pennsylvania against all enemies, foreign and domestic. My son just lost four guys from his unit. A guy who went through the pipeline married my niece. He's in Syria right now. He lost two. Yet we have people in the legislature, 
and in our Supreme Court here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania who don't see fit to uphold the oath that they've taken. Back in January, the Commonwealth Court and Supreme Court made it known, four of those justices made it known, they don't care about the Constitution, either of Pennsylvania or the, uh, the Commonwealth. When they took the pen out of the legislature's hand and decided to create an act of law, the maps that they created are acts of law. Some of the things that they've done in accepting cases like the ones you've heard of already already indicate where they want to go with our Second Amendment and Article 1, Section 21 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. Those four justices have expressed a disdain for the Commonwealth's Constitution. And I've introduced pieces of legislation to impeach all four of those justices. I look around here and I see children, I see young and old, people who understand the basics of what our Constitution is and where it came from and the reasons why the crafting of that Constitution was so important. It's sad that right now we live in a time when we forget some things like effective citizenship begins with a good working knowledge of the Constitution. Very few Americans, including those serving in higher levels of government, possess an appropriate level of understanding of our Constitution. Truly being an enlightened American citizen requires three aspects of constitutional knowledge. What does the Constitution actually say? What did the Founding Fathers mean by the words of each of the phrases and clauses? And in the years since drafting and ratifying the Constitution, how has the Supreme Court ruled on the various parts of the Constitution? That's Michael Ferris. For those of you who don't know, he's a constitutional scholar, a constitutional uh, lawyer who's been fighting for over 30 years to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. He's also a founder of Patrick Henry College, where they actually teach the Constitution. They're kicking Harvard, Yale's, Stanford's law butts in mock court debates. They're number one. We're making progress, ladies and gentlemen, but it's people like you who stand and fight. They say that guns will harm children. I've been to five or six gun raffles so far this year with almost 100 guns laying out there on a table. You see the kids here like this, looking back and forth. They won't put their hands anywhere near it because they know they're not supposed to touch them. That's the parents being responsible. I'll leave with this. There are over 1,500 words in the first part of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Those 1,500 words are the Declaration of Rights of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and it's the rights of the people, not the government. The concept of pr first principles goes back to Greek, Roman, and Hebrew law. If you've got any questions down here in the bottom, refer to the first. Well, I got news for the uh, Supreme Court and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They're fourth on the list. You, the people, are first. Your elected representatives are second. Then comes the law. Then the executive branch gets to interpret or to execute the law, and the Supreme Court plays referee like at the NFL. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you own the government. It is your state. It's your nation. Don't let anybody ever tell you different. There's a reason why our Bill of Rights comes first. God bless you. Thank you, Representative Chris Dush. You know, Mr. Cam Edwards had uh, mentioned earlier about kids versus guns and which you hold higher value to. You know, we don't cling to our guns more than our kids. We claim, cling to our guns because of our kids, to defend our kids, to defend their rights, to ensure that they can protect their rights so that they can def defend our grandkids' rights. It's important that we cling to our guns, cling to the Second Amendment, and hold on to that to pass it on to the next generation so they can pass it on and pass it on so they can defend themselves from tyrants and criminals. I'd like to now ask Representative Pfeiffer to come to the microphone to introduce our final speaker for uh, the event today, and after that we'll have the uh, God Bless America song sung by Ali Hynoski at the conclusion. So after our last speaker, don't get ready to run off yet because we still have a uh, performance by Ali with God Bless America. Representative Pfeiffer. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. It's a great honor to be here today, and it's great to see all of you. And we have a ton of people here from Western PA, but I will say from the people on the banks of the Delaware River, we do like our Second Amendment as well. We heard a little bit before about Harvard. I have a distinct honor of welcoming many guests today, but a special guest, a special guest who graduated with honors from Harvard University. That's right, a gentleman who, while he was at Harvard, realized that he needed an ultra-compact weapon, a weapon where people could use it to protect themselves because they could conceal it better, a weapon with a thinner frame. This gentleman at Harvard designed his own handgun. And it was such a great design, it was used to conceal. He was able to start his own company, Car Arms. Very, very successful. Yes. Car Arms, ladies and gentlemen. But one thing he realized quickly, the headquarters was in another state. And the manufacturer was located in another state. States in this nation that weren't quite as friendly to the manufacture of firearms. He decided to move his operation and his family to this great commonwealth. And why? After I drilled him for about two hours on why he was coming to this commonwealth, he made it very clear to me that all he wanted for himself and his family and his business was to feel welcomed. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Justin Moon. Hello, Pennsylvania. God, I love this state. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I got some facts for you. Gun-free London now has more murders than New York City. Can you believe that? Ninety-eight percent of all mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. Maybe we should start arming our teachers. You know, as our government grows, our freedoms yield. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We've seen the politicized DOJ and FBI give Hillary Clinton a free pass for apparent crimes while harassing President Trump for a non-existent Russian conspiracy. Today, we stand at a crossroads. We are forced to choose for ourselves and our children what kind of country we will have to pass on to them. Will we value the gifts of liberty? Or, we, or will we forsake our inheritance for the false promise of security? When our founding fathers established this nation, they enshrined in the right, they enshrined, 
the rights of kings in our Bill of Rights as the rights of all citizens, the right to own private property, the right to conscience, and the right to bear arms to, de to defend both property and conscience. The framers understood well that the greatest threat to liberty and the pursuit of happiness was and still is a tyrannical government. The 20th century has borne witness to the democidal inclinations of overgrown governments, imperialism, communism, and national socialism, which have murdered 260 million people in the last 100 years during times of peace. In the same 100 years, only 25 million people have been killed by criminals. The truth is, you are 10 times more likely to be killed by your own government than you are to be killed by a criminal. My father spent three years in a communist concentration camp, a North Korean death camp. Having experienced the horrors of communism, my father understood well the need to have arms, and he was one of the early founders of the South Korean small arms and defense industries. And he fathered alternative conservative media here in the U.S. by founding the Washington Times. My father knew that freedom existed because good, God-believing people had guns. Until his last day on earth, he supported the right to bear arms. Yet today in America, nearly half the millennials identify as socialists. We have not taught our children the hard-earned lessons of history. Venezuela, 20 years ago, was one of the wealthiest nations in South America and enjoyed many of the same freedoms that we have here. Today, Venezuela is in societal collapse because of the free spending and corrupt policies of the Hugo Chavez socialist government. People are starving and being killed on the streets. The government has become predatory and the people are unable to resist and defend themselves because the government confiscated their guns. We should learn the lessons of history and return to the wisdom of our founders. We should reject the calls for more government socialism. We need guns because governments and criminals are far too willing to oppress those people who have no means to defend themselves. For me, the choice is clear. I stand for the Second Amendment, and I stand for freedom, as my father did. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Justin Moon. And as Mr. Moon said, he's the uh, founder of Car Arms. He's the president and CEO of Car Arms. So we appreciate uh, appreciate him taking time out of his busy schedule and making time to come to the Capitol today and, and share with us not just his work but his family's history and something that, uh, something that this current generation needs to wake up to before it's too late. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We now have Ms. Allie Hynoski. And Allie has sung for us in the past. She's opened up in the past. And, and uh, we kind of switched things around with Day Bray USA today and uh, asked Allie to follow up, uh, close out our event today with God Bless America. Allie. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with fire. to the 
prairies to the oceans wide with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet home thank you god bless america Thank you very much, Ellie. We appreciate you being here with us again this year. Thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you to all of you who took time out of your schedule today to join us. Now, I understand that uh, many of you will be breaking up into teams to uh, lobby throughout the day and throughout the halls with either staff or members of the legislature. I um, would encourage you, if you're not already on a team, to just do some of your own lobbying. Become a citizen's lobbyist today. Make sure that your government hears your voice and that they know you want your Constitution defended. Everyone have a great day.